Hey everybody, I'm Lindsay Adler and I would like to share with you a photo deconstruction. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you one of my images and what it took to make that image from the inspiration to the lighting and a peek behind the scenes at the post processing as well. Now, uh, for this particular image, the one I want to share with you today, I was inspired by Westworld. So I've been watching a lot of Westworld and there's a scene where Maeve is walking through this kind of wheat or this field and it's really beautiful and I said, well, why not be able to make that in the studio? And so I came up with two images for this scene. So here's what the final images look like. They're moody, they look like they've been taken on location, but in fact, they were taken in my New York City studio. All right, so now I wanna share with you a little behind the scenes of the lighting. Now, as you can see, I use one, two, three, four different studio strobes. All of them are Profoto D1s and D2s. So let me start with the main light. The main light is going to shape the overall mood and light on her face, and I used a beauty dish with a grid. It's a white beauty dish, and it's off to the left-hand side of the frame, um, just almost in short light position, kind of directly from the side, so that there is going to be a lot of mood and drama to the scene. Now, if you look at the background there, um, when I look at this, I analyze that there's a sunset behind her, so I know that I need to be able to fake that sunset to unify her with the scene, some kind of light coming from behind. And so that is one of the lights here, which is the rim light. So you can see it in the back left. It's a pair of barn doors with an orange gel, a CTO gel. I have that pointed back at my subject to light the side of her face, and that's going to give the illusion that some of that golden light from the background is actually lighting her as well, making her look like she's there. All right, well, if the background is actually meant to be real, it should be glowing, it should be emanating light. So I need to light the background. And for that, I've actually added a, another background light. It's a bare bulb. When I have a bare bulb, that light goes everywhere. So I added a piece of cinefoil. You can actually see on the side of the light that there's this piece of black tin foil. It's, it's made for lighting. And I've attached it so that I could flag off or create barn doors so that that light didn't spill on my subject. All right, so that's three. So what's the fourth? The fourth is the fill light in the front. And again, this is a bare bulb. I chose a bare bulb because I knew this hard light source, even when I have it turned down low, would make a nice little sheen to the skin. So those are my four lights, but let's talk about my camera gear. With this shot, I shot with a Canon 5D Mark IV and a Canon 70-200 lens. I wasn't trying to get full length shots, especially on this background, I wouldn't be able to. So a 70-200 would give me the range for those mid length and tighter shots I would need. But the other thing I want you to notice is that I shot at an aperture of f 3.5, that's a pretty wide aperture. And the reason being is I thought if the background were a little bit more out of focus, it'd be a little bit more believable. If it's in sharp focus, you could probably tell it's a little bit more of a print. Plus, if the focus falls off on the subject and then falls off to the background, it would look like she's actually there. So it was a little bit of my trickery, what I was keeping in mind. Let's look at one other angle of the behind the scenes, and you can actually see the print a little bit better here. Uh, this was printed on a canvas print for a uh, Canon Pro 4000. So it's a large format printer. And what I do is I either take my own images or go to uh, Adobe stock and find different scenes. So in this case, with the Westworld Maeve scene in mind, I looked up these beautiful sunset wheat fields. And so I selected this, printed it out, and the canvas, it's uh, more of a matte texture, it's not reflective. So I knew that even if I lit it, it, it wouldn't shine, it wouldn't become a problem. So just one more time to look at the light that I have here. You've got that beauty dish as the main light. Notice again, kind of in short light position. So what it means is the shadow side of the face is towards camera. So that's the main light. Then once again, the rim light you see over there with the orange gel, that is lighting the side of the subject's face. You can actually see that on the side of her neck. That's going to make it look like she's on that background because the color palette is going to be united. And then one more light the bare bulb with the cinefoil, so it lights the background, gives it that glow. I pointed it right at the center of where the highlight is on the background so that it would glow from there out, uh, but the cinefoil so that it didn't also hit my subject. So let's just take a look over at uh, one of the images, first of all, so you can see what was done in camera versus post. All right, so first of all, let's look at the straight out of camera image. This is what I captured in my camera as a raw file. But I never consider the raw file um, 
like my limit it's actually the the place I begin to really transform the photo so I can use a raw processor like capture one or uh, I can use Adobe camera raw or I can use Lightroom and from there I start playing around with color and contrast and clarity and all of those things so this is what the straight raw file looked like but once I processed it in Lightroom this is what I went for. I went something much darker because it's meant to be sunset. So she wouldn't be really bright in the front. Uh, a lot warmer because it's a sunset. So the color palette. Um, so what I did is I warmed up the white balance. I darkened down the photo and increased the contrast. So it gets me there. But then I, I see a few problems I need to fix. First of all, uh, taking a look here, you can see the top of the background I need to fix. I need to get rid of some blemishes on the skin. So this is what it looked like in Lightroom before Photoshop. And then these are the changes I made once I brought it over into Photoshop. I did end up going in between. I lightened up the skin a little bit. Um, I shifted the colors just a tiny bit more, but this was straight out of camera, the raw process, and then what I achieved in Photoshop. So one more time, we can look at this and we can actually see where the light would have to be to give me this photo. So the main light, okay, it's, uh, in the back left, but that's what's catching the light on her eye and uh, sculpting the face. Then we have a fill light in the front. You can see that highlight on her arm. So that is that bare bulb in the front. Then we have the rim light, which is the brighter, more contrasty light, which was the barn doors with the CTO. And then a light pointed at the background, which is what gives it its glow. And the other close up shot, you can actually see these a little bit more clearly. So you can see the main light. That's what creates the Rembrandt light, the more white light on her face. Again, it didn't have a gel. And then if you see the rim light, it's more of the yellowish orange on the side of her face. So you can see that on her face and her arm. Okay, then the fill light in the front is what fills in and controls the shadows. And then lastly, a light uh, on the background to make it look like that glowing sunset. So these two images uh, started with inspiration from a, uh, from a movie or from a TV series. So with Westworld, uh, I knew I wanted something that felt cinematic and I wanted it to look like I could composite in camera. Instead of having to do this in post, how can I light the subject, light the scene and color grade it so it looks like my subject is actually in that scene. That was my goal and that was my inspiration for these images. So I hope you've enjoyed this photo deconstruction. And if you'd like to see more of these, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel.